Hello! I'm knitting stuff now. Hello potential friends and welcome back to the vlogging nook with me, Alexandra. So, I took up knitting a couple months ago because I desperately needed a hobby that used my hands and also was something I wasn't going to film for my YouTube channel. I know, I know, I'm now talking about it on my YouTube channel, but the key difference is that I wanted to be able to actually relax while I was knitting and not have to set up a camera every time so I could do a time lapse. Now that I am several projects deep, I figured that I could show you guys what I've made so far and talk about what I've learned along the way. I've made around 9, 10? Question mark things in the past few months, and let me tell you, it was an uphill battle at first. See, turns out that if you don't have a grandma or another type of in-person teacher who can walk you through it, knitting takes a lot of hours of sucking really bad at it before you get into any sort of flow. So the first thing that I made, I bought a kit on Etsy because I naively thought that not only would it come with needles and the right amount of wool, it would also come with instructions on how to knit. So I was uh, really confused when I <laughs> received the kit and it only came with a piece of paper with a couple letters and numbers on it, which was a knitting pattern, which are impossible to read if you are a total beginner who doesn't know what all of the letters and numbers stand for. <laughs> Luckily, it's 2021, and it turns out that there are hundreds of videos on YouTube that show you up close and in great detail how to do things like a knit stitch, a purl stitch, how to cast on stitches, how to bind off, which are all basic things that you need to know to do even the most simple scarf. So, this is the infinity scarf that I made. <laughs> when I'm wearing it, it looks pretty good, you know? You can only really see the many problems and mistakes that I made when you're looking at it up close. You can see where there's variations in the size of the stitches and the pattern does not seem regular. <laughs> Because I am fancy and I only wanted to do knitting if it was going to be stuff that I actually wanted to have and use once I was done it, I chose a soft, fancy, fancy wool for this. Here's where I, I knit it together. Can you see how awkward that is? <laughs> so this is my first project. And after that, I thought, I don't need any kits anymore. I'm just going to go buy some wool, buy some stuff, and I will make things. The problem with learning from YouTube, though, is that it only answers questions that you think of to search, such as, how do I do a knit stitch? It can't tell you things that you didn't even think of to ask, so it took me a stupidly long time to learn that there is a right side and a wrong side when you are knitting flat, and that knit and purl stitches are the same thing, they're just the back side of each other. So when you're knitting something with flat needles, you are flipping the project constantly, and which stitches you do on which side make a big difference for how the end project looks. For example, this smooth bit here is stockinette stitch, which is where you only knit on one side and you purl on the other. Whereas this is garter stitch, where you knit on both sides of the project. So this red scarf is the second thing that I made. And it is how I learned that I needed to be careful what side I was knitting on if I wanted to have a consistent uh, pattern, which I was going for. So I knitted this for my boyfriend. Um, whoo! <laughs> and if you look closely at it, you can see how I had to stop and Google, why is my knitting curling? <laughs> and then after I realized I don't know how to explain why it curls, but it does. That if I wanted to be flipping between sections like this, so this is all like purl stitch, this is all knit stitch, and it's the reverse on the other side, um, that I needed to put a border of a different type of stitch in order to stop the whole thing from curling up on itself. 
My next project I don't have to show you because it was a hat that I gave to a friend, but it was my first in the round project, which is when you knit something on circular needles. These needles are connected, so then you essentially use them to knit a, a big tube. And I found it extremely difficult, and at one point I was literally crying because I had made the stitches so small that they were getting stuck on the red part here and I couldn't slide them back over the actual needle. Yeah, it was a disaster. But I finished the hat! <laughs> you might be thinking at this point, um, this sounds really difficult. Why would you be sinking all of this time into it if you've been struggling so much? And the answer to that is in my next project. A sweater! Listen, scarves and hats are boring. There are only so many of those a person can own. But I realized that if I could knit sweaters, I could make a sweater that was one of a kind. I could make it say anything I want. I could make a sweater that had an alien face on the front and said hell yeah on the back. A sweater so stupid that there is no way I could purchase that anywhere. And that kind of power. Irresistible. <laughs> See, the thing is, stockinette stitch is basically just pixel art. So you can make any image you want as long as you just draw it in a spreadsheet first. But I knew that if I wanted to be successful at this, I should make my first sweater simple and not try to, you know, do the Mona Lisa. And that is when I found the world's best beginner knitting video. The Snuggleries How to Knit a Chunky Sweater Without a Pattern. This is a perfect tutorial for anyone who is too impatient to stick with beginner projects, but also can't read sweater patterns yet because she walks you through measuring a garment that you already have and then how to figure out how many stitches you need to make for your own project. Using her tutorial, I, I also learned the crucial skill of picking up stitches, which basically just allows you to knit an arm of the sweater right from the shoulder. So this is the sweater I made! I had to conquer a lot to get it done, including this multicolored lavender pinkish wool being discontinued, and so I couldn't find it anywhere, and I had to color match this lavender wool so that I could finish the arms for it, and luckily I had just enough of everything to make it all match. But apart from the sweater being a little too cropped, I am really happy with it. I even did, as you can see, an entire photo shoot to celebrate. In order to knit this, I used US 11 or 8 millimeter needles to make. And I think that for future sweaters, I don't want to go any smaller than that. Because what I learned is that tiny yarn takes several billion years to knit. Let me use two of my next projects as an example. I only finished this hat the other week. So this is a hat that I made for my boyfriend, he picked out the color. And I used another tutorial from the Snugglery to do it. This is actually a hat that is knit flat, and then you just gather the wool at the top. See, I had promised him that I was gonna make him a hat, but the first hat that I made using the Snugglery's tutorial was too small, because um, I had a leftover ball of wool that I had bought for my sweater, but it was the wrong color. So I decided I was gonna knit a hat in it. I like that it's like pastel swamp colors. Shrek, but make it fashion. It fits me. It fits my tiny head. The difference in time for how long it took to make these hats is insane. Yes, this is a bigger hat, but this hat, which was made on the 8mm needles, was a fun, fresh few days. Whereas this hat, which was made on 4.5mm needles, took me literally weeks. Over a month. You would work for an hour on this project and you would see essentially no progress. And it was demoralizing. I mean, part of that is that I made it too tall and I was knitting with a solid color as opposed to using color changing yarn, which you would see more progress in, but still. I was actually so bored knitting it that I finished two other projects before it that I had started after it. What were those two projects? Well, one of them was this. <laughs> yeah, it's been so long since I filmed the intro that I finished an entire sweater. <laughs> Woo! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs>
this is the thickest wool that I have worked with. And guess what? Because this was thick wool knit on 12 millimeter needles, it took me only around a week to make, even though I was putting an alien face and words on the back. So this second sweater I made by starting with the Snuggleries tutorial and then improvising from there. So I decided that I didn't want to do balloon sleeves and I didn't want to knit the sleeves in the round, which is what you do for the Snuggleries tutorial. So I decided I would knit the sleeves as a, a flat piece and then seam along the bottom. So I actually just improvised what the decreases were going to be because I wanted it to be a more fitted sleeve. That meant that the second sleeve that I did was significantly better than the first, but hopefully you can't really tell. This is the first sleeve that I did, and you can see it's a little, it's a little baggier, and that this sleeve is a little more smoothly fitted. I also picked up stitches around the neckline to make an actual finished sort of neck instead of leaving it um, this unfinished style that I did in the first one. And I'm actually really happy with how the neckline looks. I think it really came out well. My critiques for this sweater would be that I think the letters are a little high on the back, and um, I don't really like that the shoulders, because of the thick seam with the thick wool there, I don't really like that the shoulders give me a bit of a linebacker look when I'm wearing it, but I like where the crop is, and I think I did a really good job. So you might be wondering, now that I've made two sweaters, will I be following a pattern for my next one? Well, probably not. Uh, first I gotta make a cardigan, and I think I could wing that pretty okay. And sweater patterns honestly still look like ancient Greek to me because um, I have no idea what part of the letters and numbers pertains to what thing in real life, even though I can read the pattern now. So far, I've only done one thing that followed a written pattern only with no video tutorial, and that is this scarf. I haven't sewed in the edges yet, sorry about that. You can see with this scarf that I had some issues keeping the tension the same when it got to this red new pattern at the end. So it actually flares out in the red, which it was not supposed to do. And although the diamond pattern that is in this blue looked really cool when I managed to get it right, you can tell that I really screwed up a lot of it. <laughs> Basically, if you are following a lace pattern, which is what this is, um, if you lose track of where you are in the pattern, you are just pretty much screwed and the whole thing is gonna be a mess now. You have to get back on track. You have to pay attention while you're knitting if you're doing lace. Otherwise, it will not come out looking how you want it to look. I still think it's an interesting scarf for sure. And it is a present for a friend, so I'm still gonna give it to her and hopefully she will like it. Now we've almost come to the end of the tour of things that I've made, but before we get into the two most recent things that I've made, I just want to touch on one other barrier to get into knitting, other than the difficulty up front. But how can knitting be expensive when everyone on YouTube is always posting things like, I remade the expensive Harry Styles cardigan for $12. I remade this $1,400 look for only six bucks or something. Um, well, a lot of the cost is upfront stuff. People making those videos are not beginners. <laughs> to do different knitting projects, you need different needles. There are straight needles that come in all sorts of sizes, and then there are tiny double pointed needles for when you're making socks or gloves or small things like that. And then there is circular needles that come in all the same sizes as the straight needles, as well as different lengths of the string that connects them. I have been knitting now for like three months, and I own more than a hundred dollars worth of needles. <laughs> These are all the ones I have. If you buy a set of interchangeable circular needles that has the same cord and then you can screw on the different sizes, those can be anywhere from like $90 to $140 is kind of the range that I've seen. Reminder that I'm Canadian so these prices are different in American. And then there is the yarn for each project on top of that. So, excluding the needles, what is the cost of the yarn for every single project I've made so far? As you can 
see, the swamp hat is the cheapest thing that I've made. It is one thing of wool and it was on sale. And only one dollar more expensive is the orange hat. And while the purple and blue sweater is a pretty reasonable price for a sweater, the alien sweater is a lot. And that's because chunkier wool, which is way easier for beginners, is more expensive. Also, I bought wool for this instead of using something like acrylic, which would be much cheaper. I mentioned the cost just so people know, A, why buying hand-knit clothing is more expensive, because if you're not buying in bulk, the materials are more, not to mention the labor, and B, so that people getting into knitting can plan for it. Also, if you try to buy your yarn locally and you don't need to get it shipped, that cuts down on the cost a lot. All of the yarn for this is from a local store. Anyhow, this video is so long. I'm going to end on the last two things I've made, which I made using leftover yarn from uh, that I'd purchased for other projects and by following tutorials online. So the first one is I made this cropped up using leftover green yarn from the alien sweater. I did actually have to purchase one more ball of yarn though, so joke's on me. And it's kind of stupid because it is a crop top clearly for the summer and I made it using an extremely hot wool. <laughs> so there's that. If you want to make something like this, the tutorial that I followed is um, by Imogen Abbott on YouTube and I will include these kind of links down below. Um, so the last thing I made is I wanted to use some of the yarn I had left over from making this scarf because I had a ton of it. So I found this great YouTube channel uh, that is called Handmade by Aura, which tragically, in my opinion, only, only has tutorials using extremely thin yarn. Um, and I made a bralette. So this is the most complex thing that I've made so far, I would say. The good thing about this is that it had varied enough stages to the knitting that I stayed interested even though I was knitting with thin yarn, which rots my brain. The actual tutorial, um, I believe, makes around like a medium size. Um, so I took off some of the stitches from the band, I wasn't sure how many, to try and make it fit me better in the rib cage, And it's still a little looser than I would like. Having made this now, I really want to make more um, crop tops in this style and I think I know how to improvise to make it longer, make it like the thing higher here. So I'm excited about that. Okay, that's all for me folks. So I will check back in with you in a couple months maybe, see what kind of things I'm knitting then. I truly love knitting and I am excited to make more weird designs on things and hopefully expand from just alien sweaters to making like actual pictures and stuff. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! In case you're wondering what kind of weird shit I want to make. Future sweater designs. I want to make this eye sweater that I designed in Animal Crossing. I want to make a long yellow vest that has an arrow on the back pointing to my feet and says my eyes are up here. I want to make a sweater with clouds on it in sunrise colors that says hello in little black letters on the front. I want to make a sweater with clouds and sunset colors that says goodbye in little black letters on the front. I want to make weird shit. My one non-binary friend was like, you should make me a red sweater that says them fatale on it. The possibilities, the possibilities, endless. I could make that sweater that says I'm a luxury few can afford. I could do that. That is within my grasp. Yes! Okay, I'm done. Bye.